So for those of you who don't know me um, already, I'm Colin McCall. I'm a partner in Taylor Wessing's life sciences team, and my practice is very much focused on the commercialization of IP assets in the life sciences space, and with a particular emphasis on collaborations and partnering deals. And an area where we've seen um, a, a great deal of increased activity lately is, is collaborations in the a with, with AI technology companies and with big uh, pharma and biopharma players uh, uh, as well. So hence, I thought this would be a useful topic of discussion for today. So as I say, recent years have seen increasing numbers of high profile and high value value collaborations between big pharma and cutting edge developers of AI technology. So for instance, these ones here, so Sanofi and Google's Healthcare Innovation Hub, their innovation lab, they're, they're applying Google's deep analytics uh, to Sanofi's real world data set to enable development of more personalized treatments. Roche and XANT, I mean, I could have mentioned any of XANT's deals here, but um, this one uh, was, um, its, its collaboration focuses on the development of preclinical assets for Roche. Bayer and Cyclica, um, using Cyclica's uh, full proteome screening platform uh, to analyze polypharmacological profiles of small molecules. Pfizer and Atomize, um, using atomized structure-based uh, small molecule drug discovery platform to identify potential drug candidates. And then there's AstraZeneca's deal with um, benevolent AI, which has actually just recently um, yielded its first target for progress into the clinic in relation to chronic kidney disease. And so what, why are all these deal deals happening? I, I, the, 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 the promise of AI in the drug discovery process is that it properly deployed, it has the potential to pick winners and take years off uh, development timelines. And in some cases do, do things that couldn't otherwise be done. Um, and so therefore drives down the costs of developing new medicines and indeed potentially enables the development of medicines that wouldn't otherwise have been developed or would might, might, might well have been missed in the development program. And so the ultimate aim um, is, is, is of having um, an AI system that reliably designs new medicines based on information about the target disease. And it's especially, um, it's especially useful in, in the field of um, personalized and precision medicines in terms of driving down the cost and making those types of uh, medicines more uh, capable of being designed. And it's the increases in computing power and the capabilities of, of computing power um, that has made this a, a realistic possibility. And as, as I say, it's been leading to some very high profile and high value uh, deals in the industry lately such as the ones we've listed here, but this is just a very small uh, sort of subset of some of the deals that have been doing. And also a, 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 another trend that we're beginning to see in the, um, in the space is, is also um, the deployment of AI technologies into more and more facets of the drug discovery process. And so all of these drug discovery platforms are not the same. Uh, they all sort of target different aspects of that drug discovery program, but all with the same aim of um, increasing the productivity of um, uh, pharma R&D programs. And indeed, the proliferation of these AI technologies target targeting those different aspects of the drug discovery process has given rise to a number of considerations for pharma, pharma companies when selecting AI partners to collaborate with. So despite there being a lot of potential promise for these um, technologies uh, to massively shorten the development timelines for drug discovery and development. Do they actually deliver on that promise? Um, does the AI platform actually work? And also given the vast array of AI technologies available there and the different um, aspects of the drug discovery um, 
continuum that these uh, AI technologies are differentially focusing on, some of which are being found to be complementary. So we're beginning to see a bit of a trend towards um, uh, consolidation in the market. So uh, we very recently saw Xantia have acquired um, Allsight, Austria's Allsight recently. And also there was um, Precision Life and Cyclica's co-marketing collaboration. And if, if that co-marketing, so where, where they've sort of identified that their platforms um, are potentially complementary, and so they decide they go to market together to market their, uh, their two platforms as a complementary end-to-end um, -end solution. And so if that works, that is likely to be um, to lead to one or the other acquiring the other one. So how does the collaboration between pharma and AI provider actually work? So you got on the one side, you have an AI provider who have has developed some proprietary algorithms. Um, perhaps um, they've developed some natural language, language processing capabilities. So for instance, being able to um, mine scientific literature or patient records. Um, perhaps it's something to do with image or, or, or structure processing capabilities. And that AI platform has been trained on a, a curated data set. Um, and that, perhaps that, that curated data set is, is, is scientific literature, could be those patient records, um, and it, it, it could be um, structured data. And that AI system, that platform, is then ready to be deployed um, on the pharmaceutical company's data or it's in relation to its targets of interest. And um, the, in addition, the, the, the AI company may well have developed some credible expertise and models in a certain area, which might be a particular disease area, or it might be a particular facet of that, um, or, or method of, the, or, or part of that drug discovery um, continuum. So, e.g., an AI system for pre predicting repurposing of, of drugs. And then the pharma company, they, they bring to the to the party that were it's it's rich data set of historic r d data um it could be or, or it could be some drug target information so in relation to um it, it may well be a novel target and therefore very confidential to that company they also bring a great deal of expertise um, and assets for developing drugs uh, from insights that are provided from the AI. So they've got huge um, drug development machinery internally that they can deploy to um, bring forward uh, potential R&D leads. And indeed, they may well have identified some key areas um, for R&D to which it wants to apply the specific um, AI. So they might have some shelved assets that they it may well have, they may well have um, shown some initial um, uh, um, some initial uh, promise, but uh, got to phase two and perhaps got um, um, had some yeah, un unimpressive data as a result. Um, but it may well not be that that's the end of the um, the, the the possibility for those particular assets. Um, it may well be that AI can um, either stratify um, patient groups, or it may well be able to make certain um, uh, recommendations for potential repurposing of those drugs. So what type of um, IP are we talking about? Oh, so I, I just want to sort of actually taking a step back. Beg your pardon. So um, going back to those trends in the space, um, so for collaborations that involve significant ups, upfront milestones and royalty payments. The AI provider, a, a lot of those other, um, those uh, those collaborations that I've identified, they did involve some quite significant upfront payments. And so in order for a, a far com company to you know, sign up to a deal that is gonna involve some of those um, upfront deals, upfront payments, they're going to um, want to be confident that the 
um, the AI platform itself delivers on the on its promise, um, especially if there are going to be some significant upfronts involved. And so it's typical to see that um, companies dip their toe in the water a little bit with um, AI providers. And so it might be on some assets that are otherwise shelved, might be on assets that they already know the answers to, uh, just to see how the AI platform performs um, as, a, as a starting point. And so, yeah, going back to the next slide. So what, what, what actually are we talking about when we're talking about what, what IP is involved in a, 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 a a collaboration between an AI provider and a um, um, and a pharma company. Um, AI is is generally is it is based on software algorithms and those aren't patentable. And in practice, copying is possible. And once uh, once once the uh, the sort of the secret source is out there, there's the, it can be quite difficult to restrain. And so there's nothing stopping. Uh, someone from creating an algorithm that does essentially the same thing. Um, the AI has been created based on some curated training data. And so the AI provider is going to be um, rightfully highly sensitive about providing access to its algorithm and the training data and anything about how the actual platform works. Um, and so in, in a, a typical collaboration scenario, um, is likely to be two sets of very highly valuable data. So there's the AI um, algorithm and the training data, the curated training data, um, but also there's going to be the the Pharmaco's historic R&D data, um, which is going to be unique to the pharma company, uh, and it's likely a goldmine of potentially missed opportunities for drug development. So practical. Um, protection of these two sets of, um, sort of data is going to largely revolve around um, controlling access to that data. And this gives us our first potential sticking point. So dealing with both um, is dealing with both sides crown jewels without the AI algorithm and keeping that secret and the way that that works proprietary to the AI provider, essentially they, they, you know, they, they, they may well not have much to protect going forwards. And so it's, it's absolutely key to their business model to keep that as, as, as private as possible. And so um, the AI provider doesn't wish to disclose how its platform works and the pharma company might not necessarily want to give access to its legacy data to the AI provider, especially uh, where the AI provider has its own internal development programs. And it's worth mentioning that um, the AI is going to improve um, uh, as, a, as a result of being further trained on the pharma company's um, uh, data set. And so, uh, and, and hopefully, the um, the output of the um, the AI is going to lead to some patented patentable inventions. These are going to be uh, insights, and they, they could be predictions as to biological activity, targets, drugability, perhaps repurposing. Uh, but in the first instance, these insights um, will be confidential know-how. Um, so there are going to be some issues to work around. Um, primarily is this access to data and algorithms. How, how, are you, how, how, how is that sort of conundrum of the uh, AI provider not wanting to give away its secret source? And similarly, the, um, the pharma company not wanting to give too much access to its, um, its treasure trove of historical data. And it's one of those things that's going to have to be uh, fixed one way or another. Uh, one, one, one solution is to um, provide an instance of the, um, the, 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 the AI platform on the pharma company's servers. Not a popular one for um, the AI provider. Um, and the other option is for the, um, uh, the, the pharma company to give some limited access to the, uh, their background data. 
Um, what cross-licensing of background IP is there going to be in the collaboration? So typically in a collaboration you know, in, the, in the life sciences space, you'll see that um, both parties will grant each other a, a, a cross-license to their own background IP to the extent necessary to do the, 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 the collaboration. But is that going to be necessary in the context of, a, um, a, 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 of an AI collaboration, especially where the AI provider is running the um, the AI system itself based on its own access, based on its access to the um, to the farmer um, background data. Um, what is going to happen to the foreground IP? So there's, there's a couple of things to think about in, in, in terms of foreground IP. So I've, I've sort of alluded briefly to the fact that the AI as a result of being given access to the pharma company's data, that that AI is going to uh, become an improved um, AI platform. And so it, it, when it's deployed the next time, it should have um, learned a bit from the, um, the data it's being given uh, further access to in order to um, improve and refine the system. Um, but in terms of the primary output of the uh, the collaboration, these are going to be the, those insights that I mentioned. And so, who who is going to have access to those insights, and who's going to be able to uh, take those forwards? And typically, it, it, it's, it's probably going to be most appropriate for the pharma company to um, uh, be able to take ha have exclusive rights to um, use that, that use those insights to take to to, to make further. Um, well, to take take the R and D program further, they they typically have the, um, the 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 assets assets and the infrastructure to do that, and also that that's predominantly why they're entering into the the, the collaboration. But where you've got a, 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 a an AI provider that also has its own um, internal pipeline, it may well be that there are some uh, insights that the um, the um, that is spat out by the by the platform that the pharma company doesn't want to take forward. So what should happen to those? Should they be um, shelved? Um, and that might be the situation, the, the position that the pharma company might want, want to take. Or, or should the AI provider, where they've got that um, internal pipeline capability of their own, should they be able to uh, take those uh, programs forwards? Um, So we've got a, a, a sort of a, a, a possible structure here. So you could create a new instance on the, uh, the AI system. It's not typically a, a popular one with the AI provider. Um, there will be those, um, the, the collaboration will um, sort of come up with insights for further development. And then how, how will you structure that, um, the, the, the sort of the upside and the sharing in the, um, in the, uh, the commercial upside of, of those R&D um, projects. Uh, typically, what we see um, a lot of is, is that the AI provider gets um, uh, some, either some, some, either some upfront or some FT funding. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry, um, I had a little bit of feedback there. Could get some milestone payments, could get some FTE, could get some upfront, could get some um, uh, royalties uh, based on future sales. And then you know, if, if there is that flip side of um, in relation to the insights that the, uh, the company doesn't want to take further forwards, then and, and the AI provider is, is given the opportunity to uh, provide, uh, take, take that program further forwards, there would likely be a, 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 a mirroring regime in relation to um, royalties as well, given that that was based on um, the access to the uh, life sciences company's uh, data. Um, but also in relation to, um, given, given what I mentioned earlier, in that sort of the proliferation of AI technologies that are capable of, of, of applying to the R&D programs, um, there are um, there are other issues that you might want to uh, take into account. So there's um, do you if 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 a company is likely to get acquired by another AI provider and that AI provider has got um, some um, uh, internal pipeline and 
drug development capabilities of its own, is that likely to cause a problem? Um, do you want to deal with that in the contract? And also, um, if there are going to be multiple AI providers inputting into the same program, does that um, cause issues in relation to potentially um, royalty stacking type provisions? 